deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Thank you so much for joining us today. I do believe that the word of the Lord and the testimonies I will share will bring new vision, new purpose, and new life. Right in the midst of these troublesome times, it's great to know that God's word is alive and active. It's not just religion. In fact, it's nothing to do with religion. It's relationship, knowing Jesus personally. And so I was talking on the subject previously about days of destiny. And I want to continue on that today. Days of destiny. I referred to when I was a teenager leaving home in the Republic of Ireland, how that I was coming off the farm and moving to the city of Belfast, which was quite a, a big challenge for me. And uh, I'd worked on the farm and I'd been involved in meetings as a teenager, going to prayer meetings and so forth. But now it was a whole new dimension of my life, a new stage or a new chapter of my life. Days of destiny is upon all of us. And we need to remember that God is with us and he's for you and his hand is on your life. If you've committed your life to Jesus, then you're not alone. His hand is upon you. And so I mentioned a verse, Psalm 94, verse 17. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. This is what David said. Obviously, he was coming through a challenging time, a very difficult time. And he said, I would have been silent. And this is what the enemy tries to do. He tries to silence us and cause us to be beat up instead of upbeat. As believers, we should be upbeat, no matter how negative things are. For we have Jesus on the inside of us, and we have the Holy Spirit. And then I remembered about being in Burundi uh, and ministering in that part of Africa at the time. It was a troublesome area. There'd been bombings and there'd been real trouble. In fact, the pastor who we were with, he had suffered imprisonment and suffered great reproach and his life was really under pressure. He was my interpreter. And I remember during the message when I quoted that verse, Psalm 94, verse 17, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. And he could not interpret it. He began to weep and weep. And he was really overcome with emotions for he remembered what he'd come through and the challenges and the threats on his life and all the rest of it. I always remember too that his daughter, on one occasion as they were about to leave, to come to the meeting, she felt impressed to say to her father, wait, don't go yet, wait a few minutes. And they waited, they didn't know why they were waiting, but they waited and they arrived. Just a matter of moments before a bomb went off and uh, they missed that bomb and their lives were spared. And I believe guidance, divine guidance, is so important in these days. So we're living in days of destinies. And I told you about the time when I left uh, the south of the Republic of Ireland to come north to Belfast, and how there was a, a time when I stood at the border on my own for the first time as a teenager and felt alone, saw my brother's car, turn around and drive back toward Monaghan Town and back toward the farm. And I was there for the first time on my own, waiting for a lift from a neighbor to go to Belfast. And it was a day of destiny because I never was the same. I never went back, of course, came to Belfast. Over a period of time, I had a job and worked on petrol pumps and did various things uh, to try and get a small income. And at the same time, I connected with those who were believers and who walked with the Lord and got into meetings. So I do remember it being a day of destiny. And that's been the case in my life. I came to another stage in my life later 
when we went to Africa and uh, we ministered in many, many countries all over Africa for about 10 years. And we saw multitudes respond to the gospel, multitudes receive salvation and receive healing and filled with the Holy Spirit. We had many challenges there as well. But I think the key was having a, an intimate relationship with Jesus, knowing him in a personal way, having had an encounter that transformed my life and therefore nothing could make me step back or give up because of any trial for I knew the calling and I knew the destiny. And I want to mention CCN News, the spring edition, and I hope you'll request a copy of this. A lot of time was put into preparing it, and on the front cover is a photograph of a pastor from Ukraine with Evelyn and I, and we were there in Ukraine a few years ago ministering with him. We've tried to contact him since, but we haven't so far been able to contact him. So do pray for Ukraine, please. Pray for the pastors, the leaders, the people, and for the enormous number of people that have been put out of their homes have suffered such horrible pain. And so get a copy of this. It also has amazing testimonies of lives that were changed through listening to the programs and many more inspiring things that you can read as you take the time to ask for a copy of this. And then I want to re remind you of a verse in 1 Peter 4, verse 1. It exhorts us to arm ourselves with the same mind as was in Jesus. And that means we can actually have the mind of Christ. In fact, the scripture says we have the mind of Christ. When you're born again and receive Jesus, you think his thoughts and you have his mind operating in you. But we have to arm ourselves. We have to make a decision to take time to wait on the Lord, to meditate his word, and dedicate ourselves to have a renewed mind all of the time if we are to keep in a spirit of victory and faith. Thinking about wars, when you win in the air, you can have victory on the ground. And most wars have air power bombing from the sky. But we as believers can spend time in the heavenly place in prayer winning in prayer in the heavenlies, taking time to walk with the Lord, listen to the Holy Spirit, and even take authority over the works of the devil and bind them in the name of Jesus. And when we win in the air, we have victory on the ground. We can walk through the struggles and the offenses and the trials that put so many people off, and we can actually go forward in victory. And then, over in Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 11, powerful scripture which I exhort you to read. I won't go over it again, I referred to it last time, but it just reminds us that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so is his ways higher than our ways. So if we have the mind of Christ and if we have the awareness of God's presence in us, we will be able to keep strong through the struggles and through the trials of life. In these last days when trials are so many, we will know that we don't have to get down under those, but we can have victory. And it exhorts us in that scripture that his word will not return void, but it will bring a return. It will bring forth fruit. It will accomplish that which he pleases. So we need to be full of the word speaking the word, living the word, thinking the word. Yes, we have our jobs to do, we have our daily commitments, we have family, we have challenges, but above all else, put God first, as we very well know in, a, in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I think of a person who was very powerful an instrument in my life as a teenager when I first started to walk with the Lord. His name was David Greeno, and he was a man of prayer. 
He used to walk those roads around Monaghan. He'd be praying and fasting and praying for the community, reaching out to the people in the area. And he was a man dedicated to faith and prayer. And he spoke into our lives so often, again and again. And his life was a radiation of the love of God and of the power of the Holy Spirit. He would constantly talk about the purpose of God. And we all have a purpose to live for, and that purpose is to fulfill the call of God on all of our lives. So remember, God wants us to rise higher. He wants us to be ready to go forward. And I referred briefly last time to Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. Please read it carefully, study it, listen to it. It's the story of the five wise and the five foolish the ten virgins, some went out without any extra oil. They were called the foolish. The wise was the ones who went out with their lamps, with a vessel full of oil. The lamps were trimmed and burning as they went out. And then when the bridegroom called, they were ready to go in. But others slumbered and slept and had no oil. And they were calling to the wise, the foolish were, to give some of their oil, but they said, we can't do that. You've got to find your own oil. And that is true for us. We need to spend time in a prayer ourselves and take the time out to find our own oil so we drink in the power of the Holy Spirit, so we spend time alone with God, meditating in His Word continually. And then it says, at the end of that reading in Matthew 25, down in verse 13 it says, Watch therefore, for you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Jesus is coming very soon. We are very close to the return of Christ, and this world will be changed forever. Multitudes will ignore and go on and be lost in a lost eternity, but multitudes will come and are coming now to Christ in these last days and being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. So I give you a few points and I didn't get time to finish it last time. Number one was, they all had an opportunity. They all had the same opportunity. The ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish, they had the same opportunity. But half of them allowed their lamps to go out. They stopped shining. And that's a real lesson for all of us. We need to keep shining. And there's a little hope builder, which I would like you to get as well. And it's powerful. It talks about divine awareness, living in divine awareness. We all need to be aware God is with us. God is for us. His peace, his power, his ability, it's all for us. And God Almighty has a destiny and a purpose. So ask for a copy of this. And if you have a copy, get another one and send it to a friend. We need to be spending time every day sowing into the lives of others because when you sow into other people's lives, you will have others sowing into your life. The secret to having a great life is being a giver, sharing in prayer, lifting up others, speaking the word of encouragement and being ready to help those that are hurting. So number one, they all had the same opportunity. Number two, there was slumbering saints. Some of them slumbered and slept and they weren't ready when the time come and they were shut out. And the tragedy of that is indescribable. So we don't want to be slumbering and sleeping in these last days. Scripture says in Titus 2, verse 14, that Jesus gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Jesus died to redeem us from all iniquity, from all deception of Satan, which is designed to take us down Sin never pays. Sin will always deceive. Sin will put your light out. 
But if we keep walking in faith and if we do stumble or fall, the good news is we can repent and be restored and be reconciled back to God. So look at that whole chapter of Titus chapter 2, especially that verse 14, that Jesus gave himself for us. He gave his life for you. He poured out the last drop of his blood and he gave his life so you would not be lost, but you would have a purpose and a meaning and eternity in heaven rather than in hell, because heaven and hell are both real. But we need to honor the leading of the Holy Spirit every day. And then I love what it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It says, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. The Lord has prepared for you because he's been thinking about you. Jesus gave his life for you. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. So remember what it says, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. As it is written, eye has not yet seen, ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. So when we love the Lord and walk with him, you have an amazing future. No matter what the climate is outside or the trouble in the world, remember, your testimony is more powerful than your trouble. And God is with you and he's given you a testimony if you know the Lord as your Savior. Remember, life's greatest advantages is relationship. Knowing the Lord, walking with the Lord, with each other, putting right things that are wrong, repenting and forgiving each other, and maintaining good relationships. That's what's of eternal value. All else is temporary, but his word prevails forever. Then it exhorts us in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that he has a plan for us. It says, God has before ordained that we should walk in his plan. He already planned your future. The greatest thing about your future is God has planned it. And his plan is not bad. His plan is good. We know what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. God said, I know the plans I have for you, not to harm you, not to hurt you, but to give you an expected end, to give you a future and a hope. So we have a wonderful future and a wonderful hope and we're in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. So remember, life's greatest assets is relationships. And remember, God is with you and God is for you every step of the way. So remember, don't be a slumbering saint. Be awake and be alert. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us not sleep as others, even Christians around us sleeping, spiritually speaking. Their eyes are closed to what's happening in the world. Their eyes are closed to the fact that their loved ones are lost, and yet they could make a difference by getting set on fire and praying for those loved ones and being led of the Holy Spirit when to speak to them and how to be a witness to them. And that will make all the difference. I remember when I was a teenager, around coming back from school, just probably not even teenager, maybe 10 or 12, and going into the little sweet shop to get sweets. And, and the man in charge there, he was quite, uh, you know, typical kind of busy, busy person and hadn't much time at that stage in his life for children. But we had a witness to him going into his shop. And later years, he was needing help himself and we were able to help him and be a blessing to him. So let's sow our seeds into the hearts and minds of young people, of older people, people of all age groups. Let's sow into their lives and let's be a blessing. Scripture tells us in 
Jonah chapter 1 verse 6, how that Jonah was asleep right in the midst of a storm. And he was shaken in the midst of the storm and told, Awake, O sleeper, awake. And we know the story of Jonah, how he had to be thrown overboard because he was running away from God and he got swallowed by a big whale. And God in his mercy gave him another chance to go and evangelize in Nineveh. And the whole city turned to the Lord. It also tells us in Mark 4, 18 and 19, to watch out for the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things cause you to be unfruitful, to choke the word and cause you to be unfruitful. So through all the years of us developing the nursing homes and care centers and eventually employing almost 2,000 people, the Lord by his mercy and grace enabled us to keep victory over the cares of the life, of this life, and the things that could have choked the word. And by his grace, we were able to keep sharing his word and ministering to other people. Do you remember also we have another little hope builder that's been a great blessing, especially to young people. This one is called Youth Alert, Identity and Destiny. Youth Alert, Identity and Destiny. So request this, and if you've got it already, do ask for another copy and we will be happy to send it to you. Give it to them, don't just think about it, do it. And that'll make a big difference in their lives. So as we come to award the close of this program, I want to remind you that we need to realize every day that we're living days of destiny. And as we've traveled in many countries, in Romania, in different parts of Italy, all over Africa, many other countries. Back further, we were ministering in Germany, and I ministered in Sweden in my early 20s. Every day is a day of destiny, and we need to be aware. God has given us a wonderful opportunity to be one who makes a difference. 1 Corinthians 15, 34 says, Awake to righteousness, and do not sin for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak to your shame, Paul said. So we need to awake to righteousness, realizing that some have not the knowledge of God yet, but we can give them the witness and the knowledge of God. And we can be people who stand up and speak out for those in need. Point number three is midnight. It tells us there in that story of the the ten virgins, that at midnight a cry went out. Most of us have had situations that were midnight situations. Like me, when I was told in 2003 that I had a cancerous tumour and they could do nothing for me. That was a midnight experience for us. Years before, we had a midnight experience with my wife who was told her days were numbered. So we've had huge, huge challenges through our walk with the Lord. But he's with us and he's kept us and we're still here. And we're still giving him glory today. Psalm 92 verse 13 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Psalms 92 verse 12 and 13. So we can still flourish even in the challenging times if we're planted in the house of the Lord, in his kingdom, in fellowship with other believers and walking close to him. And even when midnight challenges come, we still have victory over all the works of the enemy. <clears throat> Number four, get your own oil. That's what the message was for them. You'll have to get your own oil. Nobody can make you receive Jesus. Nobody can make you spend time with God. Nobody can make you enjoy the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. You have to develop a hunger and be persistent and dedicated and stay with it through the tough times and keep on keeping on when you feel like giving up. 
So get your own oil. We all need oil in our lamps today. And Romans 5, 2 reminds us that we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. There's a, a little hope builder there too, which I meant to mention. It's one called raising your hopes. And we need that today. Raising your hopes. Because people are losing hope. And we can't have hope if we don't take time to meditate the word and build our hopes up every single day. And then a very powerful portion is Isaiah 61 verse 3. It says that he gives us the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Read that chapter entirely, Isaiah 61, especially verse 3. He gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. And then it tells us over in Hebrews eleven six, He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God will reward those who diligently seek him. And so I asked you today, do you diligently seek the Lord? Are you really sure you're born again? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you repented of your sins? That's the only way to come to salvation, is repent of your sins. Acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and you will be saved. God is for you today. He wants to bless you. Receive his eternal life. Receive his peace. Now I'm going to pray for your healing. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Let your healing power flow over the lives of each one viewing today. Let them experience your anointing, your power, and your healing virtue. Be set free from anxiety and worry, and be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you again for watching. Let us hear from you. Let us know how you're enjoying the programs. If the Lord leads you to pray for us, and I'm sure he will. If he leads you to financially support the ministry, I know he'd be leading you to do that too, because together we can work for his kingdom purposes in these days of destiny. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. We encourage you to respond to this program by post telephone, email or via our website to obtain free copies of our Hope Builders, CCN News, prayer requests or to help support this ministry by praying or giving. Look us up on Facebook and watch more programs on our YouTube channel.